Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a twin flame reading. So this is going to be for those of you that are on the twin flame journey. We're going to be taking a look at divine masculine and feminine energies, as well as what is happening on this twin flame journey, your ascension, healing, etc. So just take what resonates you guys and get rid of what doesn't. I do tend to channel for those that are experiencing either a separation or a challenge, but you know, like I said, just take what resonates for you. The uh, beautiful organite that we're going to be using here today, this is is the genie in a bottle organite created by my friend michelle from wing and bell i'll put her information down below and also the decks i'll be using i'll let you guys know what they are as i shuffle each deck and everything will be listed down below let's go ahead and get started let's take a look and see what is this masculine's energy at this time what is he holding towards this feminine these two decks here these are both from sister moon tarot we've got the moody moon messages masculine edition one and two so what is the masculine's energy towards the feminine? I do tend to say you guys, he or him for masculine and she or her for feminine. It's just the way that I channel. So just if it's a different type of situation, just apply it how it resonates. All right. Masculine's energy towards feminine currently. What is he thinking towards her? What does the headspace look like? We have already mature divine timing union. Interesting. So let's go ahead and get some tarot here. We're going to go into the Flaming Roses Tarot by Jennifer Aquarius Tarot. Ready. It says ready, mature, divine timing and union. Let's see what this is about. Okay, interesting. I have Ten of Swords, Severing Ties, Nail in Coffin, Goodbyes, Love Yourself. I feel like what's going on here with this masculine is that he may be ready to end another situation, or he may have just finally come full circle on some sort of cycle that he was on. Karmic uh, tie, karmic lesson, something. He's severing ties with something else. There's a nail in that coffin. It's goodbye. He's learned to love himself, and now he may be ready for this feminine to come into union. So that's going to be for some of you out there. It may not be for all, but some masculines are ready to come into union with you. Let's take a look and see where he's at in his emotions. Look, home, safe, intimate, comfortable. Wow. Feeling really settled in his heart space. Feeling like maybe he wants to get more comfortable. Maybe set, you know, set some roots down. Plant some seeds for the future move in together, solidify the relationship, seven of coins. Oh yeah. Look at this. It says patience, harvest of rewards, something about seeds here. Let's grow. It's been enough time, but this of course is slow growth. So it's not something where it's just like ending one thing and jumping into a new situation with feminine. But what I'm getting here is that there may be some opportunities now for the two of you guys to start planning for the future, start making some plans, how you're going to grow and come together and, and build a life together. Wow. Okay. So let's go ahead and get the overall energy that masculine has towards feminine. Okay. So we have self-destructive addiction and karmic chains, toxic. Yeah. There's something about these toxic uh, chains or karma or self-destructive cycles have come to an end. Yeah. See that, 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 uh, cycle is over. That's what I'm getting here. See, we have 10, 10, you guys. So that karmic cycle is over. Do you see divine timing now? The divine timing is this karmic lesson has been learned. This karmic cycle is finally coming to a close and this feminine and masculine may be coming into more of a union. And I feel like this masculine is coming into union with himself by loving himself and taking care of himself and being more comfortable with himself, right? And, and what this does ultimately is it helps him to come into more of a union with his feminine as well, because he has matured on his journey. The wheel is, is, is turning in this masculine's favor. Yeah, that's really cool. So that is masculine's energy right now. Um, at this time, you guys in your twin flame connection. So why don't we see what feminine's energy is towards masculine? Okay. We're going to go into the moody moon messages divine feminine edition also by sister moon tarot where is feminine when it comes to masculine 
oh, I would love that. We have, I am confident or confident. I am a magical being and creator. I do feel like feminine has probably been working on herself and working on some sort of like manifestation, manifesting perhaps this union. Okay. I don't know if I said this, this is Flaming Roses Tarot by Jennifer Aquarius Tarot. Oh yeah. Look at that. <laughs> this is crazy. So this feminine is very confident that her and her masculine would eventually come into some sort of union or that they would have an opportunity to work on this connection once again. And I'm getting here. It has happened. She's, she's held on to the faith. She's also worked on herself. She's worked on elevating her own energy, manifesting her own dreams and her own, her own goals. And so I feel like things are now working out in the feminine's favor. What she has wanted, she has created and masculine is now now kind of falling into alignment with her on this journey. Wow. Let's go ahead and see the emotions. Easy breezy. See, she's going with the flow. She's learned to go with the flow. She's not going against the grain. She's not chasing. She's not waiting. She's just allowed things to happen here. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> okay. She stayed positive. She stayed hopeful. Her faith has been unwavering. She has healed herself spiritually. She has let the divine lead her in this direction, this divine love. Wow. I mean, that's pretty magical. <laughs> so she has not lost hope in the magic of the universe, the magic of love, the magic of herself. She realizes that she is the creator of her own basically experience in this lifetime. So she has realized this. And because of this, now she has the Midas touch to create whatever she wants. So it's like the stars are in the feminine's favor, <laughs> especially when it comes to what's happening in this connection now. All right. Overall energy. And we have Emmy wish I had what she has. So she's gotten out of that energy. If this masculine has been in a karmic tie or karmic situation with another person, she, she pulled away from that envious energy instead of wishing that she was that other person or wishing that, you know, the, or the feminine wishing that she had what the masculine had. She just focused on herself. She just stood in her own lane. She just stayed in her own lane. She didn't compare herself to anyone else. She just focused on herself. And that really helped to align her to where she's at today. Yep. She let go of that. She let go of any kind of fantasy or any kind of energy or any kind of thinking that was just not serving her in a positive way. So when she did this, she finally was able to turn things around for herself. She was no longer waiting. She was no longer putting her life on hold. It didn't seem like she was in a position where she couldn't move. Now she's in the flow. So it's almost like this feminine has just gotten, gotten like cracked the code to some sort of mystery on her journey. And because she's done this, now things are starting to really, really flow for her. And she's now starting to see some sort of, of benefit of all the work that she's done. She's starting to see karmic cycles close. She's starting to see toxic patterns, um, you know, basically heal. She's starting to see this uh, harvest of rewards here, you know. She's starting to see this maturing of this masculine that he's more ready He's become more comfortable with him, himself and who he is. She's done the same. So it's all working together. So some major cycles, major toxic patterns and cycles have been closed up or are currently closing. And she knows that she is closer to union because she is in union with herself. So now she sees that her masculine is also in union with himself, which helps the two of them to align, to become, come into this physical union together. Wow. It's so beautiful. So anyways, that is what's going on with masculine and feminine right now. It's, it looks really, really good. So let's take a look now and see what is going on. Um, what, what are the biggest, what are the biggest karmic? Let's tap into that energy. Actually, what was going on with this karmic cycle, this toxic pattern here? Okay. We're going to take a look at this. What's this 10 of swords all about? What is that wheel all about? What is this toxic energy all about. I want spirit to give us some of that information. What was that all about? We're going to go into my twin flame journey shadows and see what some of these toxic patterns or cycles were all about that may still be currently clearing. 
but I do feel like things are definitely coming to a close. Okay, so we have misguided. I feel like somebody made a, it's not a mistake though. Somebody made a decision, and when they made a decision and they went down a certain path, it led them to where they're at today. So it, it's not really a mistake. Somebody didn't listen to their intuition. They didn't listen to their higher self. Their inner guidance is what it was. And so when they did this, it led them down a path. But ultimately on this path, it helped them to see things, and they learned through their shadows is what I'm getting with that. We have invading. Interesting. So something about invading other people's energy tapping in and we have secretive. Okay. I feel like this might be something, this has something to do with the feminine, the feminine in maybe at a different time before she became more evolved on her journey. She may have been secretly invading the masculine space. She may have been checking up on him. She may have been really, really invested in his journey rather than her own. And when she did that, she realized that that actually was not serving her in a positive way. This actually, in a way, misguided her. It gave her incorrect information. It wasn't even valid. It was very much, you know, low vibrational. A lot of it was misconstrued. A lot of it was, it just a lot of it created more confusion. And so she pulled away from that energy and just focused on herself and stood more in her own lane and just went with the flow instead of trying to fight this or fix it all. For whatever reason, I'm getting more of the feminine's vibe with this, okay? So we're going to go into a mixture of cards from Fire Witch Tarot, Her Truth Rising, What's the Tea, as well as What's Brewing. What are some of these toxic, destructive patterns that have been present on this journey for a little bit of time for masculine and feminine? What toxic cycles are they ready to close? We have Worst Nightmare. Okay, this is the deal. I definitely feel like this is more feminine, but it could be masculine too. Somebody is looking at someone's social media. It's seriously creating your worst nightmare. It's almost like your worst nightmare is realized. What, you're, what you think you're seeing, and then you create this whole narrative and the story, and then you piece everything together, and you're actually creating more and more and adding more to the story, talking to your friends and family about it. And, and, and it's just like, before you know it, it becomes a total freaking nightmare. What we t tend to fear and focus on the most, especially if it's negative, it seems to actually come true. How is that? Why does that happen, right? Our own worst nightmares are realized. So when we kind of went looking or searching for something, it ended up leading us, misleading us, I guess, mis misguiding us. It put us down a path that was just really, really destructive and in our worst nightmare. So we realize not to go down that road. We realize not to invade someone else's space or energy or privacy. We learn to just kind of hold back, pull back and focus on ourselves instead. When we're, when we're wasting a lot of time investigating, snooping around and, you know, just trying to figure things out, being a little investigator, we actually end up creating more problems for ourselves. I've, I, I, I've been in that energy myself and I've known people that have done that. And it literally is one of the most toxic cycles that you can get stuck in. Okay. What else? Yeah. And it really does stem from ego. It really does. Sometimes your ego just, you're, you're dying to know what's happening. You don't trust what you're feeling. You don't trust what your higher self is telling you or what your dreams or your higher self is, is basically communicating to you about your connection. So what you do is you go on social media and you try to see what's happening with your human eyes. You try to see what's happening from a logical, rational standpoint. And then you say, oh my God, it's not matching up at all. This person couldn't, me and my masculine or me and my feminine couldn't possibly be, um, having this experience or this experience that I'm having is just all in my own head. And it's just a fantasy. It couldn't, it couldn't be real. And then we tried to discount everything because of what we see on social media. Sometimes the experience that you're having is meant to just be an energetic one for a period of time. Sometimes it may not be meant to actually come forth in a 3D sense, either at that time, maybe for some ever. But the thing is, as long as we're always trying to, you know, figure things out and investigate and match up 3D reality with what we're experiencing on a, you know, on, in a, like a higher dimension, you're going to screw yourself up every freaking time. So it says hurt ego, ego 
ego getting in the way of a relationship, etc. Could also be that you see um, masculine or feminine through searching on social media and you see that they are having some sort of an experience with another person, a karmic partner, where they're actually ascending in that connection, but then your own ego gets involved and you can just create more of a nightmare for yourself because you're getting involved where you don't even really need to be getting involved. Sometimes people just need to be in other situations for a period of time in order to learn. And it has nothing to do with us, but our ego gets in the way and then we want to compare and we want to get all upset and pissed off and create drama, nightmare. That's why we have worse nightmare here. Our ego is on the hunt. Our ego is at play when we're in this energy and it will misguide you every freaking time. So you and this masculine or you and this feminine, whoever's watching the video can re could have really been stuck for a while in this cycle. Okay. This cycle is wanting to come to a close. And if it isn't entirely at a close yet, spirit is saying, now, you know, that the things to do in order to pull yourself out of that negative cycle, it's time to detach your ego from the situation, detach your, your expectations, go into more of a vibration of unconditional love for this person, instead of using your human eyes instead of lurking in the shadows, this is time for you to, to just really focus more on just you and empowering yourself. And, and instead of trying to control what's happening with someone else, allow people to come to their own conclusions, allow people to mature on their own without your help. Okay. So for whatever reason, that's the message that wants to come through. Let's get one more. We have prideful person. What is pride? Pride and ego, right? So this is definitely very much connected to ego. We have too much pride to admit that maybe lurking around on social media, right? Maybe that's, maybe that's not the best thing. I've literally had people before tell me that, no, this is helpful, that, that that's something that they feel guided to do. You know, and again, I'm not here to say what's right and wrong, but when the same person keeps sabotaging themselves and they're in a low vibrational energy and their mood just plummets after they see something on social media, you know, we can't lie to ourselves and say that's a positive. That's pride. That's ego getting in the way saying, I have to be in control. I have to see what's going on. You know, I have to constantly pl be plugged in to see what my masculine or what my feminine is doing on a minute to minute basis. That right there is not trust. That right there is not allowing yourself to have a spiritual experience with this person. That's you still trying to have a 3d experience with this person. So there's a lot of ego and a lot of pride that has either been in the way. And that's really been been invading someone else's space and not allowing somebody else to have the experiences that they need to have because we're trying to keep a watchful eye. And when we're trying to keep a watchful eye, it's telling spirit in the universe that you don't trust that spirit has your back, that everything that you're meant to know is going to come to you. You don't have to go looking for it. You don't have to check someone's social media 10 freaking times a day, you know? So for whatever reason, something is coming to an end in that department. Maybe somebody has finally decided, you know what, I'm going to pull myself away from asking about this person, being connected to people that are connected to this person, um, you know, relying on my ego and my pride to lead the way. I'm going to let my higher self instead take over. I'm going to let spirit take over. I'm going to go with more of the flow and I'm just going to empower myself rather than tapping into that low vibrational energy on a daily basis. So some of you guys have done that. Congratulations and it's worked out for you. Others of you are trying to get out of the cycle right now. And this also could be for your, your uh, twin flame, not you. This could be something that they're trying to pull themselves out of as well. So just take it as a resident, you guys. Okay. So we're actually going to go into a couple of the cards too. We're going to go into my dark night of the soul tarot with this denied shadow Oracle. So this one right here is from four of wands tarot. This is meditation. The answers lie within. See, the, your answers, you guys, don't lie. They don't lie within social media. Don't fool yourself. You're not getting answers there. You're not getting answers there. You're only being misled. It's only confusing you more. So some people are very addicted. Some people are so toxically addicted to doing this. You know, and, and, and again, I could say that's just my opinion, 
but I've seen time and time again, people remain stuck in this trap and they have too much pride to admit that it's actually doing more harm than it is good. So this to me says your, uh, your answers with this, this person are come from within. They don't come from what someone else says about this person and they don't come from what you're seeing with your eyes. They come from what you feel within. That's where your answers are with this individual. Okay. So maybe do some more meditation type of work, maybe some dream work, maybe some creative visualization when it comes to this individual. Okay. That's where your answers actually lie in this situation. Okay. Dark Knight of the Soul Tarot that I created. Yeah. We have Imp of Decay, Fruitless. This is the pent uh, page of pentacles because the, the, the deal is this is a fruitless labor. You're not going to bear any fruit when you continue to go down this, this road. Because remember this road is a dead end. It's you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You're misguided when you're trying to actually take these steps or plant seeds in the physical world, you know? And what I mean by plant seeds is by seeing what's going on in a 3D sense. For whatever reason, that's just not working anymore. Going down that rabbit hole is just creating more issues. And we have liars. Someone isn't telling the truth because this is the deal. People can be whatever they want on social media. People can say, and you know what? Some of you guys might say to yourselves, I don't have social media. So I don't know what the hell you're talking about. This reading isn't for me. It doesn't necessarily have to be social media. This could be about a, a conversation that you're having. This could be about a conversation that you're having. That's, you know, kind of re, uh, re, not re rolling. That is just um, continuously playing, playing back from the past. This could be a story that you're telling about this person. Maybe, maybe the stories that you're telling about your person, you're only telling a negative story instead of focusing on the positives. And so this doesn't help the vibration. This doesn't help constantly bagging on someone and I do see this a lot on this journey. It's like, I want to be with this person, but I'm going to be focused on all of their, all of their, um, all the lies and deception. I'm going to stay in this unforgiveness. I'm going to stay in this very bitter energy. It's, it's, it's like going against what we're trying to create here. So someone isn't t telling the truth. Someone isn't being 100%. And so if you're talking to someone about your person or you're relying on information from social media, I'm getting stopped because it's not going to, it's not bearing any fruit at this point. It's not going to help you get any deeper to the truth about what's going on here. Yep. Three of wands, uh, three of rages, three of wands up in flames because the three of wands is on the horizon. It means something that we are waiting for it's what we do at that point is we just kind of burn up the possibilities. We burn up the possibilities of anything returning. We burn up the possibilities of creating anything different in the future. The future is, is just dead. It's not really going anywhere. So spirit is asking us to really pay attention to the energy that we're holding on to because whatever energy we're holding on to is the energy that we are continuously creating. And at the very beginning of this reading, it was very positive for feminine, very much has learned the tricks of the trade. She's learned how to manifest in a very positive way. She actually is bearing fruit, but for some, some are still stuck or some have really had to come full circle with this lesson and realize that this old energy has not served in a positive way. So you've kind of graduated from this energy. And last message on this, we have avoidance running away. Okay about running away from the truth. But the thing is the ace of swords or ace of torment, ace of swords in this deck, we have smoke and mirrors. What's smoke and mirrors? Lies, deception, right? It's all smoke and mirrors, illusions. We're running away. We're avoiding it. We're avoiding perhaps taking that mirror and, and looking within ourselves. We have to go within and look for, for the answers within ourselves. We might be looking for someone else to deliver peace. We might be looking to our, our masculine or feminine to deliver us that, that closure, and what I'm getting from spirit is that we've got to create that for ourselves. We have to. And if we don't, what we're doing is we are avoiding the inevitable of healing, of growing and ascending on this journey. 
The Ace of Swords is a gift from the divine, not in this deck, but it does show in traditional tarot, a hand coming from the sky, from the heavens. It's a sword for you. And it's a sword of truth and clarity, of epiphany, of understanding, spiritual awakenings. It's a, it's a sword for you to cut through the illusions. And some of these illusions are things and lies that we've told ourselves, maybe lies that we believe about ourselves from other people. We have an opportunity to heal all of these things if we want it. And we are being given an opportunity. Okay. So through, through certain things that we do, certain behaviors, certain pathways we go down and we either, you know, sabotage ourselves in some way, or we get hurt. We learn from these things. So these are very valuable lessons and sure they may have been challenging, but they've been valuable nonetheless. So spirit saying we can't scry, we can, but we shouldn't cry over that spilt milk. Let's figure out how we can do it better next time. Okay. So that is what we have as far as those karmic cycles and all of this heavy energy that may have existed or for some of you still exists between you and the masculine or you and the feminine. So now we're going to go ahead and see what's happening on the ascension journey with masculine and feminine. Where are you guys at with your ascension journey? What is happening here? What's going on? We're going to go into by Sister Moon Tarot, the Stay Inspired Oracle Cards. What's happening on this ascension journey with masculine and feminine? We have forever. It says you have a forever bond, even if you haven't met them yet. You are not alone. Your soul is tied to your soulmate, even before you meet them or know of them. Trust this bond with all of your heart. They are yours forever. So this is beautiful. This is telling you here that the person that you're watching this video for, you do have a soul connection with them. And it doesn't matter what the label is. We're not really focused on a label. This is just an energy that you feel with this person. You always feel tied to them. You feel like you guys have a bond that just never truly dies. It never goes away. And so spirit is saying that you have been joined with this person for a reason, and it is to help you to ascend in this life. So now let's go ahead and go into the sacred healing journey cards by angelic revelation 144. Yeah, look at that. It's a sacred union, you guys. That's really beautiful. This bond is a sacred union. You have been brought together in this union for a reason. It says broken, but the thing is we have feeling fragile and needing to rebuild. This sacred union, it isn't really broken. You guys are bonded forever, okay? But the thing is, is that you may have broken aspects of yourselves and this causes the two of you to feel like you are in a separation. So there does need to be some sort of rebuilding within yourselves before you guys can come together. And I do see that you guys are both on the mend. Yep. What did I just say? On the mend. Here it is. So that way you guys can mend this bridge or mending bridges and kiss and make up. So this broken energy, it's like there's a coming back together. And this was very evident to me when we first looked into the masculine's energy, which says ready, mature, divine timing union. So... There is some sort of union on the horizon for some of you. So we're going to go into from Rising Sun Oracle, the Soul Activation Oracle deck, the uh, Light Edition, and the Shadows Edition. And I just want to see where masculine and feminine are at right now with certain chakras. Like where, what are their strengths and weaknesses right now on their journey? So what is the strength for masculine at this time? on the ascension process. I love this. We have heart chakra, believe. Okay. What about feminine? Okay. So both of you guys are in, oh, wow. Look at this. Look at this. And just so you know, this is not to say that the feminine is better than masculine, but the feminine is just a step ahead of the masculine. You can see that with the numbers. That's not an accident. You guys are both in your heart spaces. You guys are very much, your heart chakras are activated right now in a very positive way. This masculine is getting with the program. Okay. And this already came through with feminine. Remember she was in this energy here of the star, right? Believing, having that hope positive energy, things coming into alignment with this divine connection. 
So this masculine is starting to believe something. This masculine is starting to understand this connection. The masculine is starting to just really, really understand something very unique and special about this feminine and about this connection, this, this sacred energy that they share. And this feminine knew it all along. She knew eventually that this masculine was going to get it. And it's on the horizon. It is coming. And she has been patient. It's not the same of her putting her life on hold and waiting around. No, it's not that energy. She's learned to do her own thing. She's learned to go with the flow. She's learned to work on herself in the meantime. And because she's been in that very inspirational, empowering, positive, independent energy, She's radiating at such a high vibration right now that this masculine, it's like the energy is beckoning the masculine to level up with her so they can join as one. This is so beautiful. So let's see what the weaknesses may be or the challenges for masculine. And we have third eye chakra. Isn't 100% sure that he can trust, that he can have faith? And it's kind of goes the same thing with that belief, right? Believe. Can I really believe what I'm feeling? Can I really trust what my higher self is telling me? My intuition, my gut is telling me something, or is it just something I can't believe? You know, is it just, you know, superficial energy to me is just surface. It's like, ah, I don't know if I'm safe to go any deeper. I'm not sure if I can really go down that path. If I just keep everything surface, that's nice and safe. That's all I've ever known. This is very, this is very, very different to me. This is something that I've never experienced before. Can I trust it? So I feel like this masculine right now is not 100% believing what his heart space is saying, even though his heart chakra is active activated in a very strong way right now. His third eye and heart chakra are kind of in a battle at this time. So let's see where feminine is at. And we have deprived. She, okay. So she has been deprived in the 3d sense. There has been something with her masculine that is, is not matching up. She hasn't seen it. She hasn't seen the proof. She doesn't, what she's seeing or what she's seen in the past doesn't match up with what she actually feels or knows in her heart space or just her higher self. So because she's been deprived for so long, sometimes that does cause her to lose patience on this journey and to lose, um, hope and faith that what she has experienced this entire time is even real. Okay. So these stones right here, we've got the ro rhodonite garnet for feminine, and we also have the green calcite and azurite for masculine. So these stones may be very helpful, um, you know, carrying these to work on these particular things in the energy field of masculine and feminine. But I see a union that wants to come back together. I see two people that have been broken and shattered that want to come back together in this divine union. It's just a matter of time. That's what I'm seeing here. It's just a matter of time. So that's where you guys are at on your Ascension journey. So let's go ahead and get some messages here from spirit. So what's the most important thing that spirit wants the viewer, whether you're masculine or feminine to understand at this time, this right here is called the 50 shades of love by channeling the Venus 222. And this is all things intuitive messages of love cards. Most important thing that spirit wants you to know. We have be mine. So this is the thing, as much as the two of you may want to come together and, you know, embrace time alone or in nature is going to help the two of you to recharge. So there's still this continued separation until you guys are completely charged up and ready to come together. So it's telling you to have more patience and allow some more time to go on. And we have tied up. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt that there's um, an attraction here that's mutual. But the thing is, the two of you guys are both tied up right now in other matters. There's, there's other things that are happening. So it's not a matter of you guys wouldn't want to be together, that you guys have a lack of a connection. That's not the case. There very much is a connection here, as we've seen with a lot of cards here. We've had the lovers. We've had the um, divine connection. We've had like three different cards that indicate, you know, a divine union here. But people are tied up in other things or other matters. And so that's just kind of a divine timing thing. And now we have illusions. 
there's <laughs> the thing is this right here it says this person is your twin flame i don't I don't label connections in readings. It's up to the viewer with whatever cards come through. But the thing is, one one of the things that is difficult is a lot of people on these journeys, it's like one minute they're like, yes, this is my twin flame. And other times they're like, I'm not sure if this is my twin flame. What I'm getting from spirit at the end of the day, who cares? Who cares what the label is? Okay. F the label. Forget the label, chuck the label. It's not about a freaking label. That's just a name. And why do us, why do us uh, readers use this title? It's because when you're experiencing this, you have to give it, I guess, some sort of name. So that way you can create, you know, like a vehicle to get to the information. So that's why I would label a reading or a deck with that particular title because it helps people to resonate with what they're experiencing. And you just happen to call it twin flame, right? But we have all kinds of things that happen on this twin flame journey. Person that you thought was your twin flame, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Maybe one minute you're just like, you know, this, this is how I came into the journey, but it's not the way the journey ends for you. At the end of the day, to me, twin flame is a vibration. It's a journey of the self. It is a spiritual experience. It's many, many things. It's not just about your person, okay? But the thing is, we do get caught up in a lot of illusions. There's a lot of things that take us just take us in um, directions. Some of those directions may, as we had earlier, be misguided or misleading, or we feel like we've been led astray, or we feel like we've been lied to. We feel like we've been duped. We feel like a fool. We feel like we've been living in a fantasy land. 3D isn't matching up with 5D, all these things. So this is just a part of the journey, you guys. It's a part of the journey for your ego to get involved and try to make sense of it. The best thing that you can do is to chuck your ego, put it aside and just go with the flow and enjoy the freaking ride. That's what spirit's trying to tell you, because if you don't do that, you're going to get tied up every time and you're not going to be able to come into union with what's meant for you. Okay. Whether that's this person or not, it doesn't, you know what I mean? You're not going to be able to be in the flow and allow spirit to take you where you're meant to go. Some people get so hyper-focused on just this one thing that they literally energetically stand in the way of their highest good. And sometimes what we think is the best for us doesn't actually end up being the best for us. So just trust, trust and enjoy this journey. Enjoy everything that this journey has to give to you. Try not to, I mean, you're going to get lost along the way. You're just meant to. But this is about not focusing so much on a destination. Try not to be so attached to an outcome. Enjoy the journey for what it is. And that's a spiritual experience. It is being led to being the best version of yourself, being inspired by this person that you see as your twin flame, allowing this person to trigger the hell out of you or creatively inspire you to be the best that you can be in this life. That's what, to me, the twin flame journey is all about. So that is what spirit wants you guys to know through these cards that came through. At least that's what my interpretation is. Doesn't have to be everyone's. So now we're going to take a look and get some messages from your person's higher self. So your twin flame's higher self, what do they want you to know? We're going to go into this twin flame journey messages volume two that I created and my twin flame journey tarot. So let's see what your person wants you to know. What does your person, your twin flame want you to know at this time from their higher self? I was reminded of your scent recently. So some of you guys could have a particular perfume or cologne, or there's a particular scent that reminds you of this person. And what it does is it takes your person back to the trials and tribulations that you guys have gone through. Okay. It reminds them of a challenging time. It reminds them of all the things that you guys have had to face on your journey. 
But the thing that's beautiful is that that's the nine of wands. It's almost to the 10. So I'm getting here that some of you guys are experiencing a lot more triggering of your, like your senses. You're reminded of things. Your, your twin flames also reminded of things. You're seeing people that look like your twin flame. You're hearing your twin flames name. They're hearing yours too. They're seeing people that look like you. And what this does is it helps them to, to realize and it helps them to kind of go back into everything that you guys have gone through. And it helps them to eventually come full circle with this understanding that you guys had to go through things for a reason. Sometimes you always realize afterwards, it wouldn't have worked out back then, but we had to go through it. We had to go through it in order for us to be together later on. You know, what else? Uh -huh. See, I keep comparing others to you. Your twin flame will continue. If they haven't already, they keep, they have been comparing other people to you. No one compares to your twin flame or your person or, you know, this person that you've connected to. No one compares to you. So they keep comparing other people to you. No one's going to measure up quite to that level. It's just not going to happen. There's a special, unique connection between the two of you. You stand out above all the rest. I like this nine, nine, see your person. Okay. So whoever's watching the video, whether you're feminine or masculine, okay, we do have coming to a closure, coming to the end of a cycle. 10 is next 10 of wands, nine of wands. Those are the two tens that are more of like that take on a negative or more challenging, um, meaning in tarot, your 10 of pen, I'm sorry, your 10 of pentacles. Yes. And 10 of cups are very positive. 10 of wands and 10 of swords, very negative, challenging. This is, this is coming to an end whatever we've had, the self-sabotaging. This is very interesting to me because we've seen here. Let me just find it if I can. Hold on for a second, you guys. Yeah, I just love it when I do this. I have to go through all the cards because I can't find what I want. Hmm. I, I don't know, but I feel like there was a self-sabotaging card in here somewhere. Can't find it now. So maybe it doesn't exist. All right, whatever. So some sort of self-sabotaging worst nightmare. That's what it was. It was the worst nightmare card. Remember that came up in the cycles that came up in the karmic cycles, nightmares, how we sabotage ourselves, things that we do. We create worst case scenarios in our minds. We make more like we make things worse than they really are with nine of swords. It's worst case thinking nine of swords. It's our nightmares coming true. It's our anxieties getting the best of us. It's like that devil on our shoulder that just continues to communicate and not literally, but this is just, you know, kind of like a visual, just constantly egging you on to keep sabotaging yourself, to keep, to, to keep you stuck. So this is something that's been going on for a while. And your person wants you to know I'm at the end of the cycle. I'm almost done with this energy. I'm almost done. I'm almost home. I'm getting that. I am. I'm getting that. Let me get rid of this little thing here. I just had a notification pop up here. Yeah. So that's just what your person wants you to know from their higher self. I'm almost home. I'm almost done with this cycle. I am wrapping things up. Beautiful. Okay. So we're going to now end this reading with some messages for the viewer. Okay. We're going to go into things that spirit wants you to focus on and work on in the meantime. Okay. We're going to go into my divine feminine healing cards. We're also going to go into divine essentials, uh, soul purpose Oracle. And this right here is called the spiritual gifts Oracle. So let's see what does spirit want us to focus on in our, on our journey in the meantime, how should we spend our time? Claire sentience. You have the ability to feel deeply into situations, places, or people sensing something beyond the physical realm. So again, remember you guys, this connection is about your senses. It's not about what, well, I mean, I guess seeing sight as a sense, but this is about seeing by feeling. This is not about what your eyes are seeing. You're feeling something here. Trust that. 
you have the, you, you have the ability to feel something and what you're feeling is accurate. What you're seeing in your physical world, in the physical realm, so you're seeing beyond the physical. What you're seeing in the physical might not be matching up. So don't waste your time there. Spirit's trying to tell you. Don't waste your freaking time looking or lurking around in the physical sense. Don't do it. I feel like I'm scolding someone. <laughs> All right, what else? Oh my God, I love this. What did I say? Do you remember in the beginning, you guys, when we had the star? Unwavering faith. I actually think I said this. The feminine has unwavering faith. The universe is taking care of the details. So you are to remain in this unwavering faith. And you really can't do that and you will sabotage yourself each time you try to overanalyze or search for things by investigating and looking for clues and all this other stuff, looking for all of these answers outside of yourself. Stop wasting your time. Don't do it. Just trust and go with how you're feeling on this journey, you guys. That's the message. All right, last message, and then we're going to wrap it up. You're an, oh, I love this earth angel. So this is the thing. It's not that the 3D reality doesn't matter. It does. And it doesn't mean that the th what's happening in the 3D isn't happening. It is. But the thing is, utilize your time being an angel here on earth, being a guardian of the earth and her children raising the vibration of the planet. And you can't raise the vibration of the planet if you're just sitting around wasting time and staying stuck in low vibrational energy, being pissed about what your twin flame is doing or what they're not doing or what they have going on. Stay in your own lane, focus on yourself, make a difference in the world by inspiring other people by uplifting your own spirit. When we do this, we help other people rise. So you do have a mission while you're here on this planet, but it's time for you to shift your focus into a different direction rather than what you're actually seeing in front of you. Try to make a difference from a higher perspective, from a more, you know, like it says, beyond the physical realm. Some of you guys may be star seeds. Some of you guys might see yourself, you know, like an indigo or, you know, something like that, where you're just seeing yourself just from like in a different like dimensional space. Maybe some of you guys are going to be getting more into that energy and working with that. And as you do this, you actually help to raise the vibration of the planet. So Twin Flames did come here with a specific assignment to unconditionally love their Twin Flame and be in that vibration, which is the highest vibration of all unconditional love. And Twin Flames are not the only ones that can do it, but that is a specific contract. So while you're here on earth, you can help other people and inspire and, and uplift other people with your energy because of your ability to do that for another human being. Beautiful. So anyways, you guys, I really hope that that, was, that reading was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching it and you guys take care of yourselves. All right. Bye-bye.